I know that many people get very emotional about this idea if you say, uh, well, maybe the person can opt to be for Christ and accept God's grace after death. And boy, people get really emotional about that if you bring that idea up. Why do you suppose people get so upset about that when it's actually ultimately good news, really? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, I don't know exactly why people make decisions for what they do, but to a certain extent, the evangelical world exists to stop people from being destined into hell. The reason that I share my faith is because I want to give you a fire insurance policy so that you will not continue into hell. Mm. And uh, I think it's a mistaken understanding, because the Great Commission is not go and make converts. Mm. The Great Commission is go and make disciples. And what happens too often within the evangelical world, and I consider myself an evangelical, by the way. Okay. But what happens too often is we go, we preach, we get a decision on a card, and we say, yeah, wow, we got another one saved for God. Now let's go to the next person. Yeah. And we don't disciple that person. And the gospel is more than just fire insurance. Um, back in the, uh, the 20s, I think, yeah. there was this big controversy within the Church called, uh, basically came down to be the fundamentalist modernist controversy. And uh, the fundamentalists said, We've got to follow God, and we've got to pursue the first commandment, which is love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Mm -hmm. And that was great. And then the modernists said, we need to follow God, and we need to follow the second commandment, which is to love your neighbor as yourself. And so the one hmm. pursued what they would call the faith gospel, the yeah. other pursued what they would call the social gospel, and both were right and both were wrong. Hmm. Because the bottom line is God wanted both. Yes. He wants us to pursue God and seek Him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and He wants us to love our neighbors as ourselves. And what happened, I think, was the fundamentalists stopped loving people. Yeah. They just started to talk to people about just getting them into the, the heaven, get the, the fire insurance policy all set up, and we're, we're terrific. And the, the modernist social gospel forgot about the faith part of it. And so yes. both were right in the sense that they were both pursuing one of the great commandments, but both were wrong because they didn't pursue both together. There's a third alternative, which is not just one or the other, but it's both and. In fact, I actually think that's what's happening uh, even today. You, you have Armenians that say God is a loving God. He loves everyone, and he wants all people to be saved. Then you got the Calvinists, and they say God is a powerful God, and he predetermines everything that happens. And so you've got two different sides, and I think to myself, God is both. Why does it have to be one or the other? Why can't it not be both? That God has predetermined that everyone is going to be saved. And it, it's through free will. He doesn't annihilate a person's free will. He works through the free will of an individual to ultimately bring them into his presence. But he doesn't give up. What I've said in my book at one point is God's love is unconditional. He doesn't have conditions to say, well, you've got to be born in Europe or North America, or you've got to be white or black or uh, yellow or whatever it is. He's, his love is unconditional. He loves everybody. His yeah. power is irresistible. God's power will not be thwarted. Uh, it says in the book of Proverbs, there is no plan, no insight, no wisdom that can succeed against the Lord. God accomplishes everything he wants to accomplish, and he never gives up. God's love yeah. is unconditional, his power is irresistible, and he never gives up. That just seems to me that, wow, why should I expect that he's going to give up on somebody?